and for a lot of that. So will you leave here happy? <sighs> tough one. <laughs> yeah, listen, it's a very tough place to come. Um, obviously, teams have noticed that over the years. Um, they created a, a solid team, um, make it difficult for everyone. And um, obviously, it was difficult for them as well. But I think to come back um, twice is, is, is a good thing. And we take the point that we move. And, um, that's the feeling now. Yeah, with your goal, did you know you might get joy from that near post corner? So we saw Bournemouth score one against them last week. I think they're very solid in, in, in set pieces, and obviously they've shown it. But um, I think obviously when I was marked by uh, by Party, I think um, he only looked at me, so it was quite easy to get from him. Uh, but anyway, you know, it's, it's a little bit of luck that you need a little flick from from Lucho, and I was there to tap in. I probably should know this, but who would normally mark you? When you play Arsenal, would it normally be Salita? Did you spot, you know, there was a little opportunity with him not playing? I don't know. <laughs> I try to uh, just be important in every set piece that we have, and um, and obviously try to uh, not concede. And we did that, so that's very disappointing. For Liverpool, was the toughest part of the game that end part of the first half? Did they get on top then? Listen, you play here in London, uh, they have the fans behind, they created some momentum, of course, scoring the 2-1 the, the and you have to uh, be ready to fight and uh, that was the message anyway before the game um, because we will have difficult moments, tough moments and uh, obviously, like I said, um, one point, we take it and uh, we move now to, uh, to, to the Carabao Cup. Did you feel dominant second half and, and if so, why maybe did the game change? I think we kept the ball a little bit longer. I think that was a problem, at, in my opinion, in the first half. Um, we couldn't um, keep the ball longer than five times. I think, obviously, it was a good press from them, but I think if we uh, kept the ball longer, we could, could have created a little bit more momentum. Um, and the second half, yeah, we kept it longer. Um, obviously, we didn't create loads of chances, but obviously, we were much more dominant than winning the second balls. and. Trying, trying, and trying, and obviously it was a great call. Yeah, and, and psychologically, did you feel they changed a bit when Gabriel went down? It's almost like I don't know. The anxiety creeps in for them, and it's another player injured. Did you sense that in them? Another player injured? Well, I think they only had two injuries today, isn't it? So I know you've got your own as well. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously they played a very, very strong team, um, and you know it's it's part of the game. Um, we were obviously pushing and. Uh, I think deservedly uh, scored the equaliser. And look, I know you're not going to stand here and sort of tell me a contract's been signed or anything. Oh. You, can't answer, you can't answer them after every game. But how are you finding sort of staying at your top level while that's going on in the background? Listen, I'm very calm. I've mentioned it many times before. You know, let's see what happens in the end of the season. Um, I'm enjoying my football. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling very good physically, mentally. I'm in a good place and. Um, yeah, nothing more can be said. So I just want to keep enjoying enjoying the game because uh, it's a beautiful game that uh, that we play and uh, and I play as well. Well played. Thank you. Well played, Skip. Cheers. Cheers. Arsenal, first of all, how will Mikel Arteta feel having twice led in that game? He'll probably be a little bit disappointed. I think going into the game, you know, um, with, with the players that are missing, I thought Arsenal started it very well. But then when they got into a situation where they were two one up, I thought we kind of played. It felt like when we went down to 10 men again, we, everybody backed off into the into the, into our half and like invited uh, Liverpool on a bit. And I, I don't think that you can do that, especially when you've got Mo Salah not having a great game, um, Trent not having his greatest game. And then if you give them the capability and the, the time to be able to get on the ball and do their stuff, then then they'll probably punish you. And I think that's what happened to us in the end. But I said at the start, I'd probably take a draw with the team we can put out there. And, I, I, I'd probably take that now. Big smile there from Arna Slot, because when you're twice behind at yeah. the Emirates, to take something from it is a bonus, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The fact that they didn't lose is the most important thing. I didn't think Liverpool were at their vintage best today, but they probably did enough in the second half to get something out of the game. I still thought they moved the ball too slowly, actually, today, when they could have got at Arsenal a little bit more, but away to Arsenal, you know, a tough week, Chelsea, then a midweek away game in in Germany and then here uh, at the Emirates, I think they'll be, uh, they'll be fairly happy with that now. Should, should there have been a winner or is that about right? No, out? I think it was a fair result. I think when you weigh up for both teams, Arsenal, who they were missing, who then had to go off injured, um, and Liverpool, I didn't think, played that well, but did well to get back into the game. Uh, Arsenal, when they went 2-1 up, particularly more second half, they sort of sat back, sat I agree, back. with... Uh, with the lads, um, so the, I don't think either team did enough to win the game in a draw. 
was certainly a fair result. OK, so that is your Premier League weekend complete after a dramatic day today uh, as well, following on from the games that started, of course, on Friday. Nottingham Forest, actually, the only team to win away from home uh, this weekend. Uh, that was in the East Midlands derby at Leicester. Uh, then that dramatic late win uh, for Brentford and an narrow one for Manchester City on Saturday. Earlier today, uh, Chelsea back to winning ways, beating Newcastle by two goals to one. Newcastle now five without a win in the Premier League. Crystal Palace off and running at the ninth attempt. They've won for the first time this season, beating Spurs 1-0. Manchester United beaten for the fourth time already this season with a very late controversial West Ham penalty at the London Stadium and twice behind that Liverpool take a point with a 2-2 draw away at Arsenal. So as I say, Crystal Palace got their first win of the season at the bottom and it lifted them out of the drop zone. So they're now two clear of the bottom three, Ipswich, Wolves and Southampton, who are the three clubs yet to record a victory this season. Manchester United stay on 11 points in 14th position. So at the top, Manchester City stay there. It is the champions by a point from Liverpool and they are four clear of Arsenal and Aston Villa locked on 18 points. As I say, Chelsea up to fifth on 17. Yes, another four goals today in the second highest scoring Premier League fixture over the years. Uh, Arsenal twice leading 2-2. It finished all the reaction from both dressing rooms, incidentally, on the way. But let's look at, look at the way Arsenal took the lead with Bakayo Saka, because you mentioned the importance of him uh, before the game. Four in three mm. he's got against Liverpool now. Yeah, well, you're looking about the time that Ben White's got with Saka. The amount of space that's in behind him, you, you'd have to worry for Andy Robertson in this situation. I thought he got too tight there knowing that Saka would want to come back on his left foot, even though we know he can go both ways. But when you look at the amount of space there is, I can't, I'm very surprised Liverpool gave Ben White that much time. But then it's, it's, it's Robertson getting that tight there. But like he's done brilliantly because you can't stop him um, from coming inside there. And um, he's, he's put us in the lead, which we needed. He's brilliant, he's brilliant he again. Robertson a torrid first half. Actually. Yeah, he did. Andy Robertson um, had a poor game, really. And Bakaya Saka was the reason for it. It was a lovely first goal and it came out of nothing. It was far too easy to concede. When you're away from home, you should be difficult to break down. And, you know, a simple 50-yard ball over the top, culminating in a, in a, in a wonderful goal for Saka. Put, put Liverpool, um, you know, down straight away. And it shows you, though, that his form is excellent, isn't it, Bakaya Saka? He's a big player now for Arsenal, really important player at such a young age. Yeah, and there you go. Um, 50 Premier League goals, and you can see some of the names he's with in terms of the youngest to it. And from a wide player coming into the team, that, that's impressive figures. At yeah, he's, uh, he's, a, he's an excellent player. I love his attitude. I think he's missed the last two games before today, and that's the first time in five years that he's missed back-to-back back -back games, which when you consider who he is and how many times he gets kicked, um, you can't help but just like his attitude and like everything about him, got great ability and um, it was a great goal and he, that, that first half in particular showed how much he means to the Arsenal team and that they're not quite the same yeah. without him but that's understandable because he's got that much ability. Mm. And he is so durable isn't he as Alan says, mm. that's some record isn't it? Yeah it is, when you consider he's been in the side since he's what, just 17 you know, and he's been not only um, for Arsenal but England as well and playing at a high standard. This is why I find it's really unfair on him when people are constantly comparing him to other people and other players who come along and they've been doing their stuff for like 18 months and he's been doing it for coming on five years now. And he's been um, consistent with what he's doing. And I'm just pleased that he can come into a game like this and at levels like he has and, and just continue to show what he's capable of doing consistently. Mm. As you say, Liverpool weren't at their very best today, but they managed no. goals in both halves. And, and the first one was well worked from, from a set play from there. Yeah, point. it was. Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold, nice whip ball in. I mean, it's Luis Diaz, really. His movements is... You see, he's causing chaos on the, on the touchline with Raya. And then the fact that he darts in front of, of Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz has to be more aware. He cannot allow him to get in there. Mm. And as soon as he gets a flick onto it, it's always going to cause chaos. Yeah. And Van Dijk was the, was the one who, who was alive to it closely marked by Partey and it's a goal from nothing really but the set pieces really count in these big games don't they small margins yeah. and any 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 advantage you can take care of and that, and that was the same there today yeah great ball in great movement but from a defensive point of view we we talk about Arsenal how how sort of good they are at mm -hmm. attacking set pieces 
that will be something they'll look back on with regret. I mean, particularly mm. Kai Havertz, because he just didn't open his body up. He allowed Diaz to get in front of him. If you're on the half turn, and then he doesn't get in front of you, you block him, you stop him. Yeah. That's part of your job at that near post. Do not let any opposition player in front of you, because that's what will happen. Yeah. It's a strange one because, like, when he, the way he starts, he starts just in front of the near post. So even more, you'd think, I'm going to make sure my arms he, he, get my arms somewhere out. You know, it's not something that I had to do, but I've seen people do it on that near post. You get your arm and you're off. So as if somebody does, he's easing him out of the way. Because when you look at the the, the, the flight it came in on that, yeah. all he needed was to step out another yard. He yeah. probably heads that away. So, like you say, I think Al's right. You know, he probably look back at that one and you think again. You know, that could have been avoided, and that's the margins. Still and as Alan says, um, we know how dangerous they are from attacking set plays. And Declan Rice's deliveries today yeah. were, uh, particularly in that first half, were a big well, part of it, weren't they? Uh, yes. Um, you know, look, because when you when you look at a goal, what he's again, what Moreno scores, the, the, the free, it's, it's being put into such a dangerous area. It's 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 begging you to just go and head it. You don't have to do anything with it. You just have to get your head on it. And and f thankfully for us, Moreno did that. But like the ball makes this goal. I think yeah. Saka is the same. His deliveries are so good. But Declan's delivery today was absolutely bang, bang on. It's class. Is that a dream from an attacking point of view, that type of yeah. ball? Yeah, because you don't have to, you don't, you just got to make your connection. Everything's on it, the pace is on it, the whip is on it. You've just got to make, you've got to time your run, obviously, mm. try and stay on side and then just get the connection on it because the pace is there and that will take care of the rest of it if you get it on target. Great ball, fantastic header. Yeah, Mikel Moreno's first Arsenal goal that put them 2-1 in front. Liverpool, no Arsenal strength, as we mentioned, 27 uh, yeah. from set plays since the start of last yeah. season. Four more than any other team. But as I said, it's one thing known, it's, it's another thing Well, they, can, stop they can't it, stop it, it can they? they? They conceded the goal at Anfield last year. I remember early on in the game, I think it was Gabriel who scored from a, from a set piece. And... They got caught again today. Unfortunately, they did. Was he slightly offside? No, he wasn't. Virgil van Dijk's left foot was, was playing him on side. But they have numerous set-piece um, uh, routines, don't they, that they go through. That was a different one there where they get inside the players, starting an off offside position. But it causes chaos. And the fact that they're getting those rewards, it's incredibly important for them. When, it's the when delivery you, on it. It's yeah. the delivery. Delivery's brilliant, yeah. When you've got someone who is as good as like Arsenal have with Saka one side delivering and, and Rice from the, an, another side. And when you've also got players who are desperate to get on the end of it and also players who have got great movement, it's all right saying, well, we know what you do. It's mm. another thing actually it's stopping stop them, it, you know, yeah. because it, there's so many things have to be right in the set piece for it to be the perfect one like that. The ball, the movement, the blocking, the yeah. connection, all of, these, all of these things. And Arsenal, as we know, are magnificent at them. Um, also, we know how brilliant Trent Alexander-Arnold distribution is. We didn't see it that often today, no. but we did for the all-important equaliser, didn't we? Yeah, and it was it was a bit like the Ben White um, Saka movement in the first half. Lots of lots of time and space for, for Trent to, to get on the ball and lift his head up. And more importantly, as Al was saying, good movement. Salah's gone. Nunez has gone. Salah may have been offside, so thankfully Darwin Nunez took over. And then he puts it on the plate for Mo Salah. It was a really nice ball by Nunez. Very unselfish run. The moves of Salah is incredible. Yeah. It is, it is. You know, no one's going to stop him there. Yeah. I, I've, I thought that was pretty good, what he'd done, because yeah. you can see he's just overrun it. He's had to adjust his feet very quickly, Darwin Nunez, to get that to him. But, you know, he's done very well. But, like, obviously, I was gutted to see this, because even with, even with the moving initially, with the ball through to Martinelli, I would have preferred him in the moment and where Arsenal were playing to kind of get that ball and go out to the left side rather than try to take the two players on and maybe lose it situation. So again, you look back and you think, yeah, this if, 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 but is they, we got punished, got punished. And with Liverpool making those substitutions, a few people thought Diaz was having a good game. That's the reason you never take Mo Salah off, isn't yeah. it? No. He hadn't hardly mentioned his yeah. name today. No, he didn't, he didn't touch the ball a lot. He wasn't involved as, as he normally would like to be um, or want to be, but... <laughs> You know, one, whilst he's on the pitch, you're always mm. going to have an opportunity. And you're absolutely right. Why would you take your, your best goal scorer off? Because he can produce something like that. His movement was just incredible. To go down the line, to leave it to, um, to, to Nunez and then to get himself into the position where he's just hoping and praying that Darwin Nunez actually yeah, finds yeah, a finds little yes, yes. Because that was the one worry, because he was off balance a bit, Nunez. But he actually did. It was, mm. it was a great ball and it was crying out to be put in the, uh, in the back. Yeah, and he doesn't play it in front of Ben White, does he? You know, yeah. he just he, he does hold it up. And maybe that little stumble gets Ben White moving as well. 
Because in the end, Ben White just gets yeah, caught, gets caught, get, yeah. gets caught behind with, yeah. with, the, with the ball itself, and Mo Salah can't, you know, cannot miss from that that type of range. Brilliant. Yeah, six for the season, and Arsenal are sick of the sight of him because only Man United he scored more goals against in his career than Arsenal. He's into double figures. <laughs> Brilliant for him. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that before. You <laughs> well done to Mo. Well done, Mo. Well done, Mo. Yeah. You were calling them no, no, no. Mo. He was calling them no Mo at half time. No, no Salah. Suddenly... <laughs> no Salah. Right. And bro, bro Salah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he said, well, that's what he does. Shuts you up, and he shut me up. <laughs> Uh, and for the importance of Bakayo Saka being back in the Arsenal yeah. side, and he's back with a bang to give him. Yeah, the... he is. Yeah, um, he's given Andy Robertson a torrid time. I remember in his early days, Andy Robertson was very good on him, but obviously he's stronger, he's quicker, he's more experienced. And um, right from the off, obviously him and Ben White have got a great relationship. You know, obviously their, their eyes must have met, and then you know the ball too much time, no one's closing Ben White down, and this is a problem for him. Once this goes behind, you know he wants to come back inside. I think Andy's too tight. He's, over, he's, he's overshot it, you know, and Makai Saka, you know he wants to come back in on that left foot. But, you know, I think the ball from Ben White's fantastic. But here, I think that Andy Robinson's got to do it. He's got too tight there. There's not much he could do, but I think he, he can't make it as easy as this. And, you know, bam, it's a perfect start. It's a perfect start. Yeah, they've been distinctly second best Liverpool. I've actually been a um, little dis disappointed in them. Some of the players haven't got involved in the game. I thought Diaz should do more against Partey. Mo Salah's hardly had a kick of the ball. You know, the midfield is a little tiny bit passive. They've gone backwards a lot. I mean, this is all because of the Arsenal pressure, of course. But they've been... Um, Liverpool have been second best today in that first half. They need an improvement in the second half. And as you can see, uh, in terms of the youngest of 50 Premier League goals, Bakayo Saka is in very good company there uh, with some of those names. Robbie Fowler holding the record by four days. I should point out, Alan played in the old first division before the <laughs> Premier League came up. Before he started growling at me. Uh, I just, wasn't saying a word. No, okay. right. right. Football didn't exist, you <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> what have you made of it? I think Arsenal have been the better team. They deserve to be in front. They've certainly looked more threatening in forward positions. And with Saka, I mean, we talked of his importance before the game. That 45 minutes has just highlighted how good he is, if anyone didn't know. Um, right, he's correct. He's given Andy Robertson a horrible time. Every time he's got the ball, you can just hear the excitement. You can feel his confidence and his belief that he's got in it. He knows he's got, uh, he's got Andy Robertson on toast. They did get level through a set piece, a well-worked yeah. set piece from Liverpool's Yes, it was, yeah. Um... Just a simple ball in from Trent Alexander Arnold and a great movement from Diaz, poor from Havertz. Mm. You know, Havertz's job is marshalling that front post. You do not let anybody get in front of you. And Diaz waltzes in there actually really, really easily, gets a nice flick on, and it's just instinct, isn't it? Yeah. Van Dijk in front of Partey <clears throat> just to get diverted goal bounds. I think when you look at that one, I think Kai will be very disappointed with that because when you look how it's not coming it's not coming high, it's coming with good pace, but if he steps forward. One step forward, he probably doesn't get in front of him, Diaz, but Diaz has to get credit for making the move and getting the touch just when he needed to. Oh, you said Mikel Moreno needed to give you something today. Yeah. He has. He's given you his first goal for the club. Yeah, I thought he was unlucky earlier on. He, he got one, he got his legs mixed up with the first one. But this, this ball in from Declan is, you know, it's just go and put your head on that, really. You know, if you look at it, he's literally, all he's doing is just stretching out because the ball is so perfect. You know what I mean? He's got himself in a position. I always worry when they come from an offside position, but... You know, obviously why they went for two minutes to look at it. But at the same time, the ball is so good, he's literally called him on to head that. So it's a brilliant goal um, and they deserve that. Steve. Superb. I mean, it's just crying out for someone to go and get on the end of it. All He's not trying to pick him out specifically. He's just putting it into such a dangerous area where he's saying to someone, get on the end of it. And it was an incredible ball. And a great header. Yeah, 27th set play goal for Arsenal yeah. <clears throat> since the start of last season. Right, what, what will Arna Slot be saying now? What do you want to see from Liverpool in this second half? They need to be quicker, they need to move the ball quicker. They have to be um, more positive. As I said, I thought they went backwards a lot of the time today. They took the easy pass. They didn't want to run forward. They didn't want to pass the ball forward in case they lost it. And they need the bigger players to step it. Wouldn't I, I think Slobber's lie will come on soon enough if he's not coming on already. I think there'll be changes if Liverpool don't pick it up because they are distinctly second best, as I said. Arsenal are the better team and, and they look the more progressive team. Got to get their forward players into the yeah. game. They've not really had a kick either. No, three of them. The three of them, yeah. Diaz did well for the, for the corner when he flicks it on, but other than that, they've not had mm. anyone run at the defender, not yeah. got anyone go past defenders. They've not really asked a question of their marker yet.
We have got a game on our hands here at the Emirates. Arsenal lead 2-1. Bakayo Saka straight back into the starting lineup and straight back in the goals, Theo. Straight back in, but what I love about the modern day winger is he likes to do everything. And when there's time and space, I mean, I taught Bakayo that going in behind, but the finish is great. <laughs> Robertson needs to slow himself down, but the finish, we've got to talk about the finish here. He nutmegs him and he knows Robertson, he's, he's in danger. And it's an incredible finish, Fantastic. but this is how important he is for this team. But Gary had said about Virgil van Dijk getting over. Jamie, what's your thought on this? I think it's more about sprinting back. He ambles back. Listen, you can always look at someone's phone. Can, is he sprinting there? No. He actually he hasn't looked over his shoulder. You see where the other attackers are rather than helping his mates, but it's an unbelievable goal from Saka. That's all about Saka more than the mistake. Liverpool, straight back into it. The set piece again hurting Arsenal. Yeah, well, have it gets done at the near post like he did last week at Bournemouth. And Liverpool tried this set piece very early on when Trent Alexander Arnold had a free kick in the first minute. And Luis Diaz got a cross Havertz, so it's obviously a plan. And Virgil van Dijk just puts it into the empty net. But Havertz, Havertz normally does a brilliant job at that near post for Arsenal, but it's two weeks running now, he's been done. I want to see a bit of a communication from Martinelli there, just to let him know that a player's coming. That's one thing I'd say, take a bit of responsibility and let him know that your man's coming. It's a good coming. finish, though. It comes on quick. quick. Yeah, it comes on quick. Strength, yeah. isn't it, as well, to hold off a uh, party. But then we did say before the game, I think it was you that said, Roy, that set pieces could be absolutely critical here. And yeah, of course. Liverpool had their warning from this wide free kick here from Declan Rice. Should actually Marino do better with this Yeah, one? of course, he should certainly score that or, or hit the target. And they had their warning, Liverpool, and they're giving away some damn free kicks. And then when Rice gets another opportunity to put in. This one five yards closest uh, to the goal. Unbelievable. What a delivery. And do you know what? Liverpool, you can be critical. It was more giving away the damn free kick, but what a delivery. I know they was looking at offside. That delivery is absolutely fantastic. Amazing. It, it is a brilliant goal again, but Liverpool have been like schoolboys in that first half, giving fouls away in that area. They've allowed Declan Rice to get his range about four times on that side. They've got a problem on this side. You can see that it's, it's on side. We can't forget that. It took long enough. <laughs> no, it did. We, we got there, but Liverpool have got to sort something out on the left. Either it's, you bring Gomez on at left back, or you bring Sabozlai, or you bring Curtis Jones over on this side. McAllister being on a yellow card on this left side as well. They've got a big problem well, on this side. We talk about uh, football intelligence. Liverpool have lacked it. The, the amount oh. of free kicks and that free kicks it doesn't. You, you, you're going to get fouls away, but they're so sloppy and they, they do lack that bit of intensity. And, and Arsenal are in front and deserve only so. Having fought their way back into the game, Liverpool.